You know, 2024 marks the 100th anniversary uh, to what I consider the first modern season of the NHL, and I tell you why. A superstar arrived in the association that we still talk about decades after his death. It established the Montreal Canadiens as the marquee team in the league because he won the Stanley Cup that year, outlasting three big opponents. And this was the season where the NHL decided maybe it's time to expand the states. Now, the 23-24 NHL season was the seventh campaign of the NHL. Four teams each played 24 contests. The league champions were the Canadians who defeated the first play in the Ottawa Senators in the league playoff. The Canadians then defeated the Calgary Tigers of the Western Canadian Hockey League of the WCHL and the Vancouver Maroons of the PCHA to win their second Stanley Cup Challenge Championship. Now, at the NHL meeting on February 9, 24, the association discussed plans for expansion in the States. The same meeting saw the introduction of the new Hart Trophy to be awarded to the player judge most valuable to his team. <coughs> now, after suspension of their own players by the Canadians in 2022-23, the NHL decided to take a further role in the discipline as it redefined match fouls, changed fines, and added presidential review for possible, possible uh, further punishment, which is kind of mimicked today. Now, the four big rinks, of course, and the four big teams, the Hamilton Tigers uh, played in the Barton Street Arena, capacity 4,500. The Habs were playing at Mount Royal, 10,000 capacity, while the Senators were playing at the Ottawa Auditorium and the Toronto St. Pat's, later Toronto Maple Leafs, were playing in the Arena Gardens, now both 7,500. Now, a newcomer that would become the NHL's first big drawing card, the great Howie Morenz, started his career with the Habs this campaign. Moran scored the first goal of his career on December 27-23 in the first NHL game in the new Ottawa Auditorium, the, the rink that Moran's built. It was the first of a career 270 goals. Now, the Hamilton Tigers uh, stretched their team by adding Billy Birch and the Green Brothers, shorty Redders, named Red. And now they had a team that could compete nicely with the rest of the association. Now, on December 28th, Shorty scored a 12-22 overtime to give Hamilton his first ever road victory over the Senators in Ottawa. However, the changes did not pay off this season. The Tigers finished last for the fifth year in a row, counting one season he played as the Quebec, Quebec Athletics. Now, the NHL had a mid-season meeting to consider Spray Claghorn's suspension. Ottawa claimed he had deliberately injured, injured opponent, opponents, citing a well-documented spearing incident against Cy Denny. The league rejected the charges in the game against Ottawa shortly after. Claghorn was up to his old tricks. He charged, uh, charged Lionel Hitchman into the boards and earned a small one-game suspension. Now, a contest between Ottawa and the Canadians was also postponed to the bizarre incident near the end of the season. On the way to Montreal, the Ottawa train got snowbound near Hawkesbury, Ontario. The team was stuck all night, and so uh, Denny decided to scrounge around for some food and somehow fell down a well. He, fortunately, was not injured. The game was postponed until the next night, but George Vezina shut out the Sens, 3 to nothing. Now, Ottawa finished the season 16-8 and eight with uh, 74 goals for, plus 20. Montreal was 13-11. St. Pat's were 10-14, and 14, while the Tigers were 9-15. and 15. Montreal won 6-2 against Hamilton, only won three games against Ottawa in eight contests, and 4-4 four and four against uh, Toronto. Now, this was the last season that the three leagues competed for the Stanley Cup, as after the season, the PCHA folded. Two of his squads, the Vancouver Maroons and Victoria Cougars, joined the WCHL for the 24-25 WCHL season. Now, a lot of people felt there was kind of a mini-recession going on in North America as to the, uh, the, the kind of the false recovery after the First World War, and this was the main factor. Now, the Habs had finished second overall in the NHL, but in the playoffs, the upset Ottawa winning one nothing in the first game and 4-2 in the second. Now in the first game, uh, a very tight contest. Howie Marin scored a winner at the five-minute mark of the second period. And of course, there was no other counters. And Marin's was star in game two. Uh, after he scored his second of the series, Denny tied it up 1-1. Uh, but in the second period, Marin's at 3-30, or El Joliet at 6-30, uh, made it 3-1. Denny scored his second. But Billy Boucher scored at 18.05 to round out the scoring, as there were no scores in the third period. Now, in the Stanley Cup playoffs, the second-place Maroons and the PCHA once again faced the first-place Seattle Metropolitans, and once again, 
Vancouver will come out on top uh, by winning the league championship. Meanwhile, the, in the WCHL, the Tigers won the regular season and the postseason. The Canadiens owner, Leader Dandoran, wanted Calgary and Vancouver to face off against each other and then to have the Canadiens to play the winner for the Stanley Cup. However, Frank, the legendary Frank Patrick, the president of the PCHA, refused to go along with that idea. Now, since Leo Dondoran request to have Vancouver and Calgary face off first was denied, the first round matchup was the Habs and Maroons. Now, the Canadiens swept the best of three series, two games and none. The game one was played under Eastern rules, and game two was played under Western rules. Now, in the first uh, context, the contest, Helgi Bostrom scored at 5-10 to give Vancouver a 4-1-0 lead. But the second period was all Montreal. Spray Cleghorn, his first of the series, uh, at one minute mark, and then Arnold Joliet at 18 minutes for his second counter of the season. Now in the third period, uh, Joe Maddy uh, tied it up at the seven minute mark, but Billy Boucher, uh, with his game winner at the eight minute mark, uh, sealed the deal for Montreal. Yu Lehman took the loss while Vezina won again. Now, the uh, game tree was decided in the third period, and it was a battle of the Bouchers. Uh, there was no scoring after two stanzas, but in the third period, uh, Billy Boucher, with his back-to-back counter, scored for Montreal at, tr- at uh, 5 minutes and 14 minutes, while Frank Boucher scored at 15 minutes to reply for Vancouver. And Lehman and Vezina were the, uh, had the tools of ignorance in this one. Now, after sweeping Vancouver, Montreal's next opponent was the Tigers. Montreal swept them two in the best of three. Harry Morin scored a hat-trick in Game 1 and another counter in Game 2, which was transferred to Ottawa because of the slushy ice at Mount Royal Arena. Of course, this was uh, late March. Morin's was body-checked by Cully Wilson Calgary uh, in one game and suffered a chip collarbone. The Canadiens swept all the three teams they faced during the postseason en route to their first Stanley Cup since their 16 championship win as a member of the NHA. Now in the game, uh, game one, the Tigers were no mats match for uh, uh, the big three of Morenz, Boucher, and uh, Joliet. Uh, after the first, Morenz uh, gave Montreal a late lead, scoring at 19-10. In the second period, Morenz with his fifth of the postseason, followed by Boucher and uh, Morenz again, made it uh, 4 nothing before her, Herb Gardinier scored in 19-30 to make it 4-1 after two. And in the third, of course, the great Aurel Joliet at 340 and Sprague, the second of the postseason, sealed the deal for the Blue Ball Rouge. Now, Charlie Reed started uh, and took the loss for Calgary, and uh, the uh, the thin man, Vezina, Vezina, won again. Now, in game three, it was all Montreal. Morenz, with the seventh of the postseason, and the Stanley Cup winner, scored a 455. No uh, counters in the second, but Billy Boucher, with the sixth at 330, and Aurel Joliet at 1350. Uh, did it for the uh, the uh, the Montrealers. Vezina and Reed again were the starters. Now in the postseason again, uh, Morenz uh, led all scores with uh, seven goals and three assists for ten points. Now Frank Neighbor of the Senators were named the Hart Trophy winner, while Brian Cup and the Prince of Wales Trophy won the Montreal. Now because the Prince of Wales Trophy was not existence yet in '94, it was backtracked uh, as their their names were officially engraved on the trophy in 25-26. Now, scoring leaders on the season, Sai had uh, 22 goals and 24 points to win the, the scoring and uh, points race. Billy Boucher had 22 points. Orel had uh, 20 points, going 15 goals. Babe Dye, a strong season for Toronto, 17 goals and 19 points. George Boucher, the other Boucher brother, 14 goals and 19 points. Billy Birch, 16 goals for the Tigers, 18 points. Jack Adams for the St. Pats, 13 goals, 3 assists, 16 points. Howie had uh, 13 uh, goals in a regular season, 16 points. The uh, the uh, the legend of King Clancy continued, 16 points for Ottawa, 8 goals, while Reggie Noble had 12 counters for the same Pats in 23 games for 14 points. Now the big uh, the big uh, goalies, uh, there was only 5 goalies the whole season that played. Vezina led the whole league with a 197 average. 0.02 against the great uh, pass, the, the great Clint Benedict uh, with uh, Devote at three shutouts. Jake Forbes for the Tigers, uh, Ham- the Hamilton Tigers, of course, 9 and 15 with 275 average. John Ross Roach for the St. Pats uh, went 10 and 13, one shutout, 348. And uh, 
Sammy uh, Hibert for the Senators in the two games he played uh, in Lieu of Benedict. 450 average, one win, and one loss. And uh, the coaches that year, of course, Percy LeSueur and Ken Randall for Hamilton, Leo Dandarin, the Hall of Famer for Montreal, Tommy Gorman for Ottawa, and Charles Query for the St. Pat's. Now, Red Green and Shorty Green debuted for Hamilton, of course. Howie Moran, Silvio Manta for Montreal, and Frank uh, Finnegan. Now, the players had their uh, last uh, contests uh, for uh, uh, the players that season. Joe Malone skated his last game, Hall of Famer for Montreal, Jack Dara for the Senators, and Amos Arbor for the St. Pat's. Now, uh, Morenz and Silvio Manta were both signed as free agents during the season, but Frank Finnegan with the Senators. Now, major trades that year, Amos Arbor, uh, Bert uh, Corbeau, and George Carey were sent to the St. Pat's for Kenny Randall and the rights to Corbett identity and cash. Now, between the Senators and the Tigers, Leth Graham was uh, sold to Ottawa from Hamilton, while uh, Ganton Scott was sold to Hamilton by the St. Pat's uh, for cash. Now, talking, uh, ladies and gentlemen, talking about uh, Sammy Hebert, it's a very, uh, very unique uh, career. He, uh, he only played a few games in the NHA and the NHL, but what was uh, kind of weird, he played with numerous Ottawa sides. Now, he played with Ottawa City Cedar, the Ottawa Stewartons, the Ottawa New Edinburghs, the Ottawa Senators, uh, and the, the Ottawa Ordnance Corps, and then back to the Ottawa City, City Cedar, and also the Ottawa Senators, the 24 version. So he played OHA International, IPAHU, OCHL, Exhibition with the New Edinburghs, the NHA, the NHL, the ONDHL, and of course the West Coast Hockey League. So uh, an Ottawa mainstay for a, a number of seasons. Now, uh, he is considered probably one of the most interesting players of his era because, again, what he did in Ottawa with the other teams. And uh, he was property uh, of the Montreal Canadiens for a short while. Now, the teams he was affiliated with included the Toronto Ontarios, Ottawa Senators, Montreal Canadiens, Quebec Bulldogs, uh, Ottawa, of course, uh, Saskatoon of WCHL, uh, Moose Jog WCHL, and again, uh, several free agencies. So, uh, Quite, uh, quite an interesting career. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here, what our vintage podcast, uh, what, what's going on with Edmonton in the series, three nothing down to Florida, we have to remind people when the Canadian team did win the Stanley Cup. But I'm always fascinated by 1924 because I read some books that uh, uh, McFarland and Fishler had worked on. Uh, but uh, put it this way: a superstar only arrives in a big way. Howard Morenza arrived and changed the NHL from a hard-working grinder league to a superstar league. There's no doubt that Harry Morenz was the, the, uh, a superstar for the Montreal Canadiens. Yes, Vezina was great, but you say Harry Morenz, and it's like, you know, it's like Jean Beliveau, it's Rock and Richard. And, uh, you know, I heard stories about Harry Morenz that basically on one skate he was better than the, the opponents on two skates. He knew where the net was, and I guess Harry Morenz said every shot you don't take, you don't score. I guess he originated that, but he said it in French. So you t- do the math on that. It's like uh, Justin Timberlake didn't invent the, the phrase, what goes around comes around. That comes from a, a Northern Brunswick saying, goes back to the 1700s. So Harry Morenz, we've done podcasts on the big guy before. He's connections with the Jeffrey family as well. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the playoffs. You're watching NBA tonight. Looks like Boston's going to have a record 18th banner. Got to make more room at the, uh, what do you call the new garden, as we say. Thanks for listening. Bye.